a weaver who learned how to weave using a four shaft table loom. And so I know that I'm a little bit prejudiced and I find myself very often recommending four shaft or multi shaft looms to people who are interested in learning how to weave. However, I know that there is a huge, huge proportion of new weavers who are introduced to the craft through using a rigid heddle loom, which can be much more accessible, often less expensive, and just easier to start with than a multi shaft loom. So today I want to talk about how Shaft has actually created a new product which provides the best of both worlds. The Cricut Quartet is now a new product from Shaft that expands on the functionality of a rigid heddle loom and converts it from being a rigid heddle loom to a four shaft loom. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a moment in time where we pause and we talk about the importance of making time to make things. Now, one of the challenges of trying to encourage people to learn how to weave with a four shaft loom is that I know that the learning curve is a little bit steeper. I know that the time involved to dress a loom is a little bit more. However, I feel like the trade-offs are immense. The amount of patterning, the amount of weave structures that you can learn, all of this with a four shaft loom, I think is incredible. <laughs> but on the flip side, a rigid head of loom is very easy to get started with. You can be up and running with a rigid head of loom in an hour. You can have the loom built, <laughs> warped, and you can be weaving within an hour or so. And so I find that part of it incredible. So what if you have a rigid heddle loom and you've been working on it for a while and you're wanting to explore some other weave structures and some new techniques and things like that. So you can definitely start to add things like pick up sticks to your arsenal. You can add additional reeds to your arsenal. You can try a lot of different techniques to create new fabrics on a rigid heddle loom. Now, if you don't want to be manipulating pick up sticks and multiple reeds and things like that, you could start to move towards a four shaft loom. Now, what if you already have a rigid heddle loom? You don't want to necessarily buy a second loom. And so this is exactly the thing that Shaft has created. This part here, all of this that you're seeing here, this is a new accessory that you can add to an existing 15 inch Cricut loom. It's a rigid heddle loom. You can add this accessory to your rigid heddle loom to convert this whole thing into a four shaft loom. So this is purely designed, I think, for someone who already has a Cricut loom. If you are wanting to get into four shaft weaving to begin with, this may not be the configuration that I you know, recommend straight off the bat. But if you already have a 15 inch Cricut loom, then this is a great way to sort of expand on what you already have and move into an entirely new realm of weaving. So what I wanted to share with you guys today is sort of a little bit about the building of this accessory piece. You can see it's all completed right now. This is sort of, these are the four shafts. I'll show you this in a second. This is a beater. Everything is all assembled. Um, it took me about an hour to assemble all of the accessory and to attach it to the existing uh, rigid head loom here. I'm borrowing Greta's rigid head loom here. And there's obviously, you don't see a warp on here. I haven't actually put a project on here yet. So I don't know how it feels to actually use this sort of, uh, set up yet, but that's sort of the next step. But the first step is that I just wanted to show you how this all comes together. So I filmed the process of assembling this uh, accessory piece. And so the quartet is basically you start by putting together these side pieces and then you add this top configuration. All of these um, flippers that activate the shafts, all of this comes pre-built. So this comes straight out of the box. And then there's a piece in here. There's kind of like a little shelf in here. And this is where there's actually little uh, pulleys that help to move these cords, these textile cords, from where they're all aligned in the center here of the loom and move sort of number one and four out of the way so that 
that they can attach to these flippers on the outside here. So one and four. So that is the first part that gets assembled. The side pieces, this top piece comes together. It's all very, very simple. You just need one screwdriver and then everything just comes together really easily. This is made out of um, a really, really solid plywood, which I believe is the same plywood that gets used for the Shacked Ladybug spinning wheels, a number of products. So it's really nice and sturdy. The next process is actually making these shafts. And so all of the shafts um, have been sort of half assembled. So there's two rods connected to one of these side pieces. And you basically have to take three bundles of heddles and divide them over four shafts. So each bundle is a hundred heddles. So we basically put 100 heddles on one of the shafts and then count off 25 and pull that off and reserve that for the fourth shaft. And then we have four shafts, each with 75 heddles. Then there's uh, these Texolf cords, which basically tie to the middle of each of these shafts, and they are attached to each one of these uh, flippers here. So these levers will raise or lower your shafts. And this is what allows all of the patterning to happen. So you have one, two, three, and four. So once the shafts are built and they're attached to this and all of this is on, then you attach these, these, these back pieces. And these back pieces basically um, push the back beam of your loom a little bit further out. So normally, you can see this is the end of the actual Cricut loom, and this is where the back beam normally would sit. But in order to get a larger depth back here for, for your warp, uh, these pieces kind of extend the, the back beam out a little bit further. So what we do is we actually detach the original back beam from the Cricut loom, and then we assemble it back here. So we just move the pole from here to here in order to add a few more inches of depth to the loom. So that's one of the pieces that gets reused. The other part that gets modified is that your original Cricut loom has a cross brace in the middle. And so that cross brace gets removed and replaced instead with this, this new cross brace. And that new cross brace allows you to put this entire assembly on and attach it to the loom. So all of this is fixed. These sort of curved um, back end extension pieces, they just fit over the Cricut loom perfectly. Everything just fits together really, really, really well. When I was attaching this new cross brace to the whole system to attach it all together, uh, I think I tightened a little bit too much and uh, it made the sides compress a little bit too much and almost prevented the shafts from rising properly. And so I just loosened a little bit on the side so that I wasn't squishing the loom together so much. And now all of these pieces were fantastic. So you can see that the action here is quite smooth. You can lift two, you can lift any of these easy to flip back and forth. All of that seems good. Now, the front piece, this here is your beater. You can see this is kind of like a swinging beater, a sliding beater. <laughs> no, not a sliding beater. It's more like a swinging beater. This bottom piece is sort of free. So I think that because when you beat, you're going to want to beat with your beater perpendicular to your warp. And so I would imagine that you would need to sort of practice using this beater so that way you're always beating straight and getting a perpendicular beat that you're not accidentally swinging too much this way or beating too much this way. You don't want to beat this way. So you kind of have to like slide it forward in this way to get it to beat perpendicular. So that's one thing that you might want to uh, practice with. The other thing that you might notice is that all of these wooden pieces, these plywood pieces came unfinished. And so if you want to, I like wood finishing, so I would probably go through and finish the entire uh, surface of the wood just to protect it, keep it for long term. I know that Schacht will use Danish oil on a lot of their products. They use it on their looms. Um, my Baby Wolf is Danish 
oil. My Shack Matchless is also used Danish oil. So you could just very easily put Danish oil over this entire thing just to protect it and keep it nice, keep the wood nice, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Now the thing that I recommend to anybody who gets a loom, new loom, used loom, new to you loom, any kind of loom, just put on a quick and easy, small, narrow warp. Just a small one, simple one, just to get a feel for how everything works. And so that's definitely the next step here is to just give this a try and see how it all works. But I can already see that I feel like this accessory, this Cricut Quartet, to me feels like a game changer because it means that if you already have this 15 inch Cricut loom, if you already got bitten by the weaving bug, if you were already a little bit interested in learning how to weave fabric, you can take your existing equipment and continue. There's a journey, there's a path for you to continue into learning more about weaving and then more about multi-shaft weaving. So if you were buying your very first loom and you want your very first loom to be a rigid heddle loom, I feel like this allows you to have a path to expand on. So just to let you know, the reed that I selected here, this is a 12 dent reed. This is typically what I would use for a fingering weight sort of knitting yarn on a project. So I use 12 ends per inch for weaving plain weave and things like that. And so that's what I've popped in here. But this 12 dent reed, you could swap out for any other kind of reed. You could use an eight dent reed, 10 dent reed. All of those options are available if you're to select the quartet. So Shacht also includes this cute little booklet which shows you instructions for how to warp and how to weave. So they talk about how to wind a warp either using warping pegs or a warping board and they sort of walk through an entire process of uh, dressing the loom from front to back. So that means that you're taking the warp and you enter the warp onto the loom from the front which is through the reed here and then through the heddles and then onto the back beam. Uh, so that's called a front to back warping method. The method that we teach at the school, the School of Sweet Georgia, is we always do back to front. And so what that means is that we actually wind the warp onto the back beam first and then thread it through all the heddles and then slay the reed and then tie onto the front. Just a number of different ways of dressing your loom. So some people prefer front to back, some people prefer back to front. Lots of different reasons for doing different versions. But that is the method that's described in here. But you can definitely do both or either. So that is basically it for today. I think that this product is going to be so incredibly interesting to follow because I really want to see people who are interested in weaving continue their journey into weaving and deeper into learning more about weave structures, how fabric works, how to create all sorts of different patterns. Um, there's so many things that you can do with color and texture and pattern and weave structure and all of that you can explore if you already have this Cricut loom and you just add on this little extra piece. <laughs> so this Cricut Quartet, we have them available on our store for the Sweet Georgia store. So you can find them there and we have them with the different reads and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited to hear about what you think about this product, this idea, this concept. Um, this is not the same as just getting a table loom. This is converting a rigid heddle loom into a table loom. <laughs> I think it's so cool. Um, so yeah, just really interested to see what you have to say about it. If anyone has it, I would love to hear your feedback about how it's been working out for you. Um, and if you are at all interested in weaving and learning how to weave, we of course have classes on the School of Sweet Georgia to show you all of the steps from winding a warp to dressing your loom to all of the ways that you can be super efficient in threading your heddles and slaying your reed, every single aspect of the weaving process we learn about and are interested in exploring there. So I hope that you'll find us there as well. So that is at schoolofsweetgeorgia.com and then our shop, the Sweet Georgia shop, is at sweetgeorgiayarns.com. So hopefully you will find us there. I would love to hear from you and hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.